unawares. Somewhere is a pocket. So I don't know. Are we on? We are. I don't know if I've told you the story of our new mic, but the old mic had a little switch on the side. It was easy to tell if it was off or on. The new one has switches on the side and there's only four of them, so you never know, is it off or is it on? So that's why I've been pulling it out and checking it. Uh, let's see, by the way, welcome to the house of the Lord as we give Jesus Christ our worship and praise. And we thank God for each of you, especially as the O virus uh, intensifies. Um, you do have this insert, uh, invitation uh, from LWML and Wings. Uh, that's for January 30th, so fifth Sunday of the month. Uh, I want to take a look at that. It's still up a debate. Uh, if Life Sunday is next Sunday or if it's the 23rd, we've got conflicting reports. So uh, I think it's going to be the 23rd, but it might be next week too. But uh, what, normally it's the third or fourth week uh, in December. So um, if, if we have Life Sunday next Sunday, you'll know it. And if not, it'll be on the 23rd. Uh, also, uh, this is... Take down decoration day uh, after the service, so if you'd like to stay and help uh, get that as we put stuff away, and and I always it's always kind of depressing that Sunday after we take all the decorations down because ooh it looks so bare. So anyway, uh, still like always openings on the flower chart, and again uh, Ron may speak to our midweek, which uh, will continue uh, what till Ash Wednesday. Uh, as uh, we have a, a dinner and, and a Bible study and a devotion and and so uh, goal is always to try to get you out by around 715 which is way earlier than we used to do so let's begin this with 394 a festive song
Please rise as we follow divine service too as printed in your folder. We make our beginning this day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you with thought, word, and deed, by, by what, what we, we have done, done and by, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, strengthen our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our introit today from Psalm 2. Behold my servant whom I upheld, my chosen one in whom my soul delights. I will tell of the, de of the decree. The Lord said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possessions. You shall break them with the rod of iron and dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, O kings of the world, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom my soul delights. We continue with the Curie. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, Take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ. 
with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him as your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized in his holy name faithful in their calling as your children and inheritors with him of everlasting life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with the reading of the Holy Scriptures. The baptism of our Lord, the first Sunday after the Epiphany. Our Old Testament reading this morning is found in the book of Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 7. And uh, thus the uh, prophet Isaiah writes, But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flames shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my eyes and honored, and I love you. I give men in return for you, people in exchange for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, who I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading this morning is found in the book of Romans, chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. The, um, Paul writes, What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin for one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. We know that Christ was raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must consider yourselves dead to sin, and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. gospel this morning is found in the book of Luke, chapter 3, verses 15 to 22. As the people were in expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Christ, John answered them all, saying, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hands to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but the chafe he will burn with unquenchable fire. So many, with so many other exhortations, he preached good news to the people. But Herod the Tetrarch, who had been reproved by him for Herodias, his brother's wife, and for all the evil things that Herod had done, added this to them all, that he locked up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heavens were opened. And the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came down from heaven. You are my beloved son. With you I am well pleased. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our baptismal faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Our sermon hymn number 405, To Jordan's River Came Our Lord.
Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Isaiah predicting, uh, really from Isaiah 40 on, that second half, if you will, of Isaiah, primarily gospel and gospel and gospel, where the 30, first 39 chapters is judgment and law. Romans. We had parts of Romans just yesterday at Virginia Smith service to remind us that we who have been baptized into Christ's death are also baptized into his resurrection and in his life. But there's a reason this Sunday is called the baptism of Jesus, or the baptism of the Lord, technically. And that's why I like to say a duh question, because for Sunday of Epiphany, the baptism of Jesus Luke sort of goes through it. Matthew gives us the the more detailed account. Uh, But all the Gospels speak of it. And Luke, I think Luke writing a bit later, especially later than Matthew, is like, well, you know all the good stuff, right? You know about uh, John and, and him coming up and saying, you know, I should be baptized by you and other things that are really, really important to the story, which is, Behold the Lamb of God, who does what? Who takes away the sin of the world. And of course, we're now in, officially, the season after Christmas, although I know we've still got our decorations up. We're Epiphany, the revealing, the light coming into the world. It's all about God manifesting his salvation to us and to the world. Of course, the Gospels are silent regarding Jesus' life between the ages of 12 and 30. And so we've been in a time warp. Last week, we jumped ahead 12 years. Jesus, we had the, the one event, the one event in the Gospel of Jesus' childhood where he's 12 and he's in, the, in Jerusalem and at the temple asking questions, but I'm guessing answering. And now we've jumped ahead yet again 18 years. Jesus is 30, and he's beginning his public ministry. But as I've told you many times before, there are some fanciful stories uh, about books that we don't consider canonical, that is, uh, on par with Scripture. But we have, I've told you the story about uh, one of the stories, you know, Jesus finds a dead bird and brings it to life, and then... uh, also, that same story, uh, making little birds out of clay and bringing it to life. And and then, to me, one of the lamest stories in that group of stories is, well, Joseph, a carpenter, right, cut off one chair leg too short. I'm like, come on. But that's the story, and Jesus fixes the chair, whatever. But the gospel accounts, understand They're not biographies, but rather they're an extended introduction to what? To the passion, the death and passion of Jesus, of the Christ. And in our text today, God begins the public revealing of the saving work of his beloved son. Notice in this story, Jesus does not introduce himself because John the Baptist was called to prepare the hour for the Messiah, servant. And in baptism, Jesus receives from John, God marks him as the fulfillment of all salvation history. Why? Because in his baptism, Jesus is anointed to complete the great exchange of his life for the life of all mankind and the salvation of the world. So it's kind of like Retro here, right? Because we've been in Advent and we've heard about John and the voice in the wilderness. But he's preparing the way. It's always interesting because uh, John tells people, no, I'm not the Christ. And I was like, well, you're doing this stuff and you're 
preaching, and, and, and he's preaching, by the way, law and gospel. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. But as we're told, all the people were in expectation, using the words of the text. And they were for literally hundreds of years. Prophet after prophet of God's people said, the Messiah will come. Who's the Messiah? We know from Micah that we had in, in December where he's going to be born in Bethlehem of Judea. And what is the Messiah to do to save his people from his, their sins? But we also know there was great misconception that when the Messiah would come, he would also be a political leader. He would be a, 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 a political and a military leader. Well, he's going to sit on the throne of David. We know what David did. He cleaned house around, around Israel. You know, he won this war and that war and this one and this one. He was a great general. Again. So if he's in the kingdom of David, he must be this great military leader and a political leader. And after all, we want to get rid of the Romans, the Roman foot upon the neck of Judea. And all people were wondering in their hearts concerning John. Oh, is this the one? But John tells them time and time again. I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming. We're also told in the other guy, you know, John even goes for I'm not worthy to tie his sandals. That I'm just here. Luke sort of gives, again, too, a short version of, of the baptism, but also, well, oh, by the way, Herod the Tetrarch, that's, you know, Herod, who was king when Jesus was born and sent soldiers to kill Jesus. And then now this is the son. And, and the, you know, all these guys had, had bad track records, right? It was like, well, I'm the, uh, the so-called king. By the way, Herod the Tetrarch had petitioned Rome. Well, I want to be named king over this area. And Rome says, not only did they deny that, for a while they arrested him. You know, so uh, he had his issues. He had lots of issues. But key here, John, when he's talking about Jesus, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And as verse 17 reminds us, Jesus comes to save, but he also comes to judge. Just as we confess in the Apostles' Creed, uh, on those non-communion Sundays and the Nicene Creed on those communion Sundays. He will come to judge the living and the dead. He will come at that point. But we also know he comes to save. That was the whole purpose of the birth of Jesus. God's son. Imagine as we talked about that last month. God's son being born of a woman, being born... In a, literally in a stable being placed in a manger because there was no housing in Bethlehem. That Jesus. And now, and now he's beginning his public ministry at, uh, by undergoing the baptism of John. It's interesting how uh, uh, later in the book of Acts, uh, I believe it's uh, Paul, uh, they run into a, a couple guys and and. They were uh, disciples of John, and, and yet they were, they were preaching the gospel, but, but they didn't quite have it right. And, 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 and the apostles were like, well, who's, you know, who's baptized? Well, we were baptized like John. I said, well, you need to be baptized in the name of Jesus, which I always find interesting. Again, just before our Old Testament reading in Isaiah 42, Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen one, in whom my soul delights. That was our intro. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. You know, uh, in, in all our civil unrest the last couple of years and the pandemic, and, and didn't we think, you know, about this time last year, Wow, we've got the vaccine. We're, we're, you know, we're home free. We're going to get a, the world vaccinated, and and the virus will go away. And then, well, maybe not. And 
Then we got the Delta, and now we've got what I refer to as the O virus. It just keeps going. It just keeps going. But the point, the point, Jesus Christ, God's Son, now fulfilling the law. For whom? For us. But also uh, the, the longstanding baptismal font here at Emmanuel, and for, for the and literally hundreds baptized at that font, and for each of us as we were baptized. Uh, I remember uh, as a child going to the, to the baptisms at my grandma's uh, uh, little Methodist church in Chelsea, and, and you know, it was old-fashioned, right? They'd take them down to the, I'll use Oklahoma vernacular, down to the creek, and, and they were muddy. Boy, were they muddy, you know, and God bless them. They marched down in the water and, and that preacher baptized them. But our baptism, it's also why, by the way, when the kids come up on communion Sunday, what am I saying? Remember your baptism. Why? Because nothing on this earth can take that grace away from us. Can we deny Jesus? Can we lose our faith? Absolutely. But that baptism seals us into the body of Christ. When people lose their faith, God didn't change his mind. God doesn't change his grace, but rather we have that free will. We can do that. But by the waters of our baptism, we're saved. By the waters of our baptism, we're called to be part of the family of God. And so this is, again, like the transfiguration that we'll have in a few weeks. The, the Trinity's there. The Trinity's there. Interestingly, the way Luke points this out, when all the people were baptized, in other words, there's a large group there. They're out at the River Jordan, and they're coming to hear John the Baptist preach, and we know that from our Advent readings. You know, John was a little bit of a different dude. You know, he's got camel hair coat and, and eats locusts and wild honey, and so... But he's out there doing what God had called him to do. We remember that story from Elizabeth and Zachariah, his parents. You know, we're, we're never told uh, what happened to, to Zachariah and what happened to Elizabeth. You know, we know that she was later on, uh, on in life when she had John. But did she have to endure what Mary did where uh, her son, her son Jesus is brutally murdered and hanging on the cross and she had to see that and endure that so also was you know the scriptures are silent was Elizabeth still alive when Herod uh, in, in a drunken rage uh, uh, says okay yeah uh, the wife's daughter dances for him and, and they have that story and well take off his head you know was was Elizabeth there? Was she still alive to know her child, her holy child given by God, had suffered that horrible fate? The scriptures are silent. But on that day, the baptism of Jesus, the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. It's been, you know, the, the figure, the symbol for the Holy Spirit ever since those scriptures and then the voice from heaven you are my beloved son with you I am well pleased Harkens back to Psalm 2 I will tell of the decree the Lord said to my said to me you are my son today I have begotten you begotten is a word we don't use too often and some scriptures, even our ESV has changed that uh, 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 wording, but it's a unique word. It's in our confession that we say it that way. Begotten, not made. In other words, he's not a created being because he's God with the Father. He's God with the Holy Spirit. This one, this special one, Jesus Christ. You know, there's a zillion TV channels anymore. And, and I don't even know now if, if you're under 30, if you even watch TV, because 
you know, grandsons will, oh yeah, I'm watching a YouTube video. What are you watching on? There's a 32 inch TV in there, but we're watching it on our four inch phone. But one of the trends is what I like to call rescue reality. And yes, even noted channels like the Weather Channel has jumped on board and they have Coast Guard rescues from Alaska and lifeguard rescues from California. And each person in those shows, no matter how the rescue or what it is, that first responder is placing his or her life in the same danger as the one whose life they are saving. We see this every day, whether it's locally or nationally, that our first responders risk their lives every day to save others. And dear friends in Christ, that's exactly what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. At his baptism, Jesus is fulfilling the will of the Father, and he stands in our stead. We're reminded by St. Paul in the Romans text that through our baptism we are united with Christ in his death, so also we shall be united with him in a resurrection like his. Important verses that we shared yesterday at Virginia's service. Simple water. We remember our catechism days. Simple water with God's word. Yet through the sacrament of baptism, we are bound with Christ now and into eternity. May God the Holy Spirit guide and direct us so that we always remember God's grace through our baptism now and throughout our earthly life. Amen. Now may that peace of God which does transcend all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus this day and every day. Amen. We rise as we sing the offertory. to our prayers, Delia and Charles Collard, uh, both suffering, uh, Holly can maybe tell you more later, uh, from a virus, and it might be the flu or it might be COVID. As some of you know, it's really, really hard to get a COVID test, so they don't know, but uh, they're both uh, at home sick. So let us pray. Lord God, the maker of heaven and earth and the giver of all life, we thank you for the mercies you granted to our departed sister, Virginia Smith, and to Debbie Stewart during their earthly lives, and especially for calling them to faith in Jesus Christ. Comfort the family and friends who mourn their deaths with the hope of a glorious resurrection and a joyful reunion in heaven. And keep us mindful that we are mortal, so that we will ever be prepared to die in the faith and finally receive the glory promised to all who trust in your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, we pray this day for the Lutheran Church, Missouri Senate, for President Harrison, and for all our synodical officials, congregations, pastors, teachers, and commission ministers that we continue to reach out to a lost and dying world with the good news of our salvation as found only in Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, we continue to pray for all who battle the COVID virus. We pray for all our doctors and nurses and all our medical personnel and for all who are involved in the vaccination efforts. 
And we also pray for our first responders, our firemen, our EMTs, and our policemen, and all who continue to respond to all disasters. Guard and protect them all in their duties now and into the future. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, you know the hearts and the minds of all. You know those who are sick and those who are shut in and those who stand in need of your care and comfort. But today we pray especially for Delia and Charles, for Ivan Smith, for Eulinda Smith, for Lon Keister, for Harvey Norris, for Pastor Louis Keneve, for Hilda Keneve, for Marianne Riley, for Scott Riley, for Bill Mahan, for Betty Mahan, for Elliot Stratton, for Diana Hansen, for Diane, for Lil Larwig, for Paula Montgomery, for James McMullen, for William Jackson and his family, for Wendy Myers, for Connie McCright, and for Alan Kieschnecker. We pray your spirit's comfort to be upon each of them, O Lord, that you will guard and protect them in the days and weeks ahead, and that if it be thy will, you would grant healing to the sick and comfort to the afflicted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, as we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, dear friends in Christ, as you go forth this day and every day, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Please be seated at the baptism of Jesus. It's also a chance for us to remember and renew our own baptism. And so we sing the closing hymn, 590.
late announcements? You want me to talk about Wednesday nights? You go promised ahead, go us, for so. it. All right. Well, we're having our church family nights still yet this Wednesday and every Wednesday, at least through February. We'll talk about what happens in Lent when we get around that time. Uh, but we're going to have uh, this Wednesday pork roast made by our great chef, Scott. So <laughs> we will certainly enjoy a wonderful feast. Then uh, we are continuing our kind of Christmassy stories that we're looking at Christmas a little more in depth, Epiphany as well, uh, as well as our Worship Wednesday. So come be a part of it. Enjoy a great meal, a great time of fellowship, uh, enjoying our time together at Bible study. If, however, you prefer to uh, get your wrist in shape and ring that bell, we've got those living bells. So uh, bell practice is right after the meal and right before the worship. But then it's great to get together and have that time of worship together on Wednesdays. Thank God for all these done for us. Look forward to seeing everybody there, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Other, Lois has an announcement. Whoa, it's written. That could be a long, a long announcement, Lois. I know you all saw this, but I just want to point it out that this is the first response to the surveys that you all filled out of things you would like to do, have the congregation get involved in as mission outreach. That's how our LWML is kind of moving this year. And so the first one is Sunday, January 30th, right after church. We'll feed you a real light meal and have a very short uh, Bible study by Deborah Allen. And then we will work on sending cards to our people that have not been able to come for any reason, COVID, whatever. And we would like you very much to be a part of this mission outreach to our own congregation. And anybody that can stay today to undecorate, de-decorate, take it down, whatever, we will be very happy that you stayed. Other announcements? Have a blessed day. Enjoy this weather. <laughs>